Okay, so I've been asked to do an example involving joint exponential distributions. So um, let's um, first of all remind ourselves what the jo uh, what the uh, probability density function is of the exponential distribution. Well, it looks like this, and it uh, you can see you've got it's got a strange parameter here called lambda. Okay, so this parameter lambda has actually a quite a precise meaning. Okay, then this is a rate parameter and it, we are told that it arises in the context of events arriving at a rate lambda okay so for instance if I told you that I have uh, lambda equal to and I'm talking about road kills in this instance so this would mean that I have two road kills per unit of time and I chose here my unit of time to be one hour okay so two road kills per one hour therefore if somebody asks you what the average is of these road kills, what, the, what, what is the average time uh, that the um, these events that take place, well, you would say that this is 30 minutes, yeah, because if there are two road kills per one hour, then the um, time between the two road kills is 30 minutes. So we have straight away established a rel relationship. Lambda is just the reciprocal of our uh, mean, which is the average arrival time. So these two are kind of mean and, and the rate parameter are related to each other, yeah, in that they are reciprocal of each other. Okay, so now we had a, a brief introduction to the exponential distribution, uh, and we are told in our example that um, an appliance relies on two components, one of which has a random lifetime x and the other has a, a random lifetime y. Okay, so um, here we've got a machine and we've got two components x and y actually x and y is not the components themselves it's just the lifetime of these components we are told further that they are um, independent exponential random variables so we can just denote here x tilde uh, exp stands for exponential with one is with the parameter one is distributed with the parameter lambda the other one is also an exponential variable distributed with parameter mu. So we are further told here that appliance will fail when either component fails and we are asked to uh, calculate probability that x greater than t and y greater than t and by doing so show that the lifetime of the appliance also has an exponential distribution and give the parameter. So let's uh, let's just um, tackle this problem. It's, uh, it should be clear to you that these are the marginal distributions of lifetime of these two components and by independence if two variables in the, are independent the joint probability okay is just the product of these two uh, PDFs probability density functions and that's what we've done we just multiply these two by each other and this is our joint PDF now that was extremely easy that's unfortunately not enough because we still have to do some um, uh, kind of integration here. Now let's think about this. We are told that machine will fail if either of the component fails. So machine's life is like intrinsically related, intertwined with these components. It's like you uh, imagine yourself, you have a heart and a, and a brain. If either of these two fail mal or malfunctions, you are probably dead, okay? Uh, you can't live with a brain and you can't live with your heart. So it's the same with a machine. So if I tell you, for instance, that um, I mean, you're just going to use this formula mean mean uh, x and y. So if I tell you that component y lived for 30 days and component 2 lived for 50 days, then it's clear that the machine lived only for 30 days because it's just even though the other component lived slightly longer, the machine itself can't live with just one component. It has to have two components in operation. So in essence we are asking ourselves a question, what's the probability that mean x and, and y is greater than some value time t? Okay, So what's the probability that both uh, component y and x will survive b before, uh, sorry, after some time t uh, simply because we just can't live with one component so we have to have it, uh, we have to have them both surviving. Okay, so it turns out that um, if we were to graph our probability density function, 
uh, we will get something like this and visually so say I choose my T to be somewhere here in the middle visually we are interested in integrating okay anything that's from T to, till infinity in both directions for both for the lifetime of X and lifetime of Y. So when we perform the integration we're not interested in anything that's before T, yeah? we just want to know what was the probability that our uh, machine will survive after time T, okay, for both, bo uh, for both components, uh, component Y and component X. To find this probability that the machine uh, uh, machine will survive beyond time t, we have to integrate, i.e., find the for the volume under under the surface, yeah, from the volume under the surface. And how do we find volumes under the surface? Well, that's pretty easy. Okay, you just have to make sure that you set up your integrals properly. So now, uh, let's just do a little warm up. A probability that machine will survive from zero till time t, well it's very easy, you just put lower limit limits of in integration as zero and upper limits of integration as t. Okay, so uh, by the same logic, if you want to know what the probability is that mach the machine will survive beyond time t, well it, it we have to integrate in this direction, yeah, so we just say uh, integrate this density from t till infinity okay and by doing so standard integration you can follow it um, easily okay because I've, I've, I've put all the steps uh, quite clearly you arrive at a very simple expression and a very interesting and easily easily mem memorizable okay so let's go through this integration very briefly here's our PDF we first differentiate it with respect to X therefore we can pull all the constants and also we can pull this expression here which is not dependent on X in front of the second integral now when we differentiate this it's very simple we just get this expression here and our limits of integration are f from T to infinity uh, let's deal with the upper limit of integration first when we uh, when x tends to infinity e to minus u times x tends to zero so therefore we have our first limit of integration here minus down the limit, lower limit of integration lower limit of integration when we plug in t we just get this expression here so this all simplifies to that okay now we perform the same integration with respect to y okay as just as we've done with this, with respect to x it's the same the same kind of mechanics and we you will notice that you will get something like that okay so two exponential because these guys cross out so u crosses with mu um, and lambda crosses with lambda you will get this which is the same as that so that's a great um, uh, that's a great result I couldn't get more excited because actually uh, our closed form solution for uh, for joint survival time of the comp two components is actually quite a memorable expression. It's a very easy easy um, formula to remember. It's just e to the minus t mu plus lambda. Therefore, to answer our question, our machine has an exponential distribution as, as can be seen here with parameter mu plus lambda. So why do we, why do we go f through all this pain if it wasn't for um, us being able to apply it to some kind of a re real life example? So we have here. Um, so say you are told that the average life of component one is four years and average life co component two is five years. What is the probability that the machine will survive beyond year six? Well, guess what? It's just plug and play. Plug in your um, rate parameters. Well, of course we discussed this earlier, rate parameter is just reciprocal of 1 over uh, the expectation, yeah, expectation which is our average and we are told here that average life of component 1 is 4 years, okay, and average life of component 2 is 5 years so for lambda it would be 1 divided by 4 and for mu it's going to be 1 divided by 5, okay, because here in this expression we are told to plug in um, rate parameters, not to the av average uh, life. Okay, so once we do it uh, we get something like 10.54%.